here with Mobile Cup of Joe filling in for Joe Martin tonight. We were running about 10 minutes late or so, but we thought we'd make it a spooky show and make you guys wait in uh, high anticipation for the show to go live. But we are here, and we've got lots of awesome topics planned for the night. As you saw by our title tonight, we've got official details on the Samsung Galaxy View tablet, along with the brand new Droid devices that Motorola created and announced for Verizon Wireless. And along with that, we've got some details on the whole Chrome OS um, dying story that you probably heard late last night or at some point today. We've got all the details on that. And we also have some cool little reviews of the Wacket Smart Wallet that we're finally going to get to review uh, since Patrick is not ditching out on us tonight. And the <laughs> Zeus, or the Zus, however you want to pronounce it, and an ergonomic mouse that Fred has got his hands on. So a few cool, cool little um, kind of accessory espresso shot reviews coming up as well. So we've got a really cool show planned for you. If you're watching the show live, remember that the Q&A is open. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in there. And if you're watching the show on YouTube, leave a comment down below or leave us a question or a comment on any of the socials using the hashtag MCOJBrew. Now, um, before we get into the topics and before we catch up with the hosts, I'd like to introduce our very special guest for the night, uh, Brandon Geisel. You've probably heard us mention his name on the show before. Um, he's been a pretty longtime fan of World Cup of Joe since we had Kevin Nether on a few months ago. But he's always there in the Q&A, leaving us questions and comments during the live show, comments on all the YouTube videos, and was actually the winner of our last giveaway for the $15 Amazon gift card. So, Brandon, if you want to talk about yourself for just a second and, um, you know, let people know who you are and where they can find you online, maybe on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, whatever it may be. Certainly, Joe. Thanks. Thank you guys again for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm currently uh, in college uh, working on my uh, information technology degree. I uh, plan to be a system administrator uh, and uh, big, big fan of the show, big fan of uh, mobile technology and... Uh, also kind of a big fan of Motorola, although that's kind of, uh, that, that's that been hindered just a little bit as of recent, but uh, happy to be here, and uh, thank you guys for having me, and uh, you guys can find me on uh, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, uh, pretty much uh, if it's a social network, I'm probably there. <laughs> Even MySpace? Uh, no, MySpace. That's though. where it's at. Oh, well, maybe next time. All right. Um, well, thanks, Awesome, uh, to have you on. Thanks for joining us for this uh, show we're doing tonight. And we'll just go ahead and catch up with the regular hosts. Um, going from my left to right, we've got Ben Schoen. How are you doing tonight, Ben? I'm doing good. Awesome. And we've got uh, our oldest brew crew member. we got Fred Scholl. <laughs> um, oldest, old, and, um, old. oldest with us, yeah. <laughs> Chronologically and age, yes. Uh, seniority and age, I guess. Um <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I do have the uh, the DXT ergonomic mouse, which we can talk about a little bit on the show. Um, I've got a couple of new phones here that I, I had hoped to get the time to play around with, um, but have not yet. A couple of budget phones that came from my friends at Sprint, um, a Huawei Union, um, and uh, HTC Desire 626. Um, so those will have to be for a, a future show, but um, keeping busy as always, and happy to be here. Awesome. And our last uh, host for the night is Patrick Campanelli. So what's been going on with you this week, Patrick? Um, nothing. I mean, like you said, we've got the Walk It and the Zeus coming up, and uh, those are two you know big pieces of tech that I got in recently um, that I've been playing with. And the idea of a, st a smart wallet at first didn't really appeal to me, but I absolutely love it. Um, and, you know, coming up in this next week, um, as always, I'm going to try and get some reviews out there. I got a bunch of stuff in that we're, that we're working on at Gadget Spot, and um, a lot of stuff in the works, and, and you know, the back end, uh, I guess, as all sites always have. Um, but overall, pretty calm week, pretty calm week in, uh, in news as well. Um, hopefully things will pick back up next week. So, uh, but that's awesome. it. Awesome. Well, cool. As for um, myself, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the Mobile Cover Joe website this week. I've got articles up there about the uh, new Droid phones that were released, the OnePlus X, which we'll be talking about later on in the show, and also a new um, email client, a uh, new Android app that AOL actually created. Um, so we've been getting lots of content up there recently. Holy shit, that scared me. Um, okay. So... <laughs> Okay, I um, was not expecting that. That was kind of terrifying. Um, but also, we have got some stuff coming up for 
the uh, YouTube channel, my Huawei watch review should be going on the website and the YouTube channel, hopefully sometime early next week. Um, but aside from that, I'm going to go ahead and try to breathe by taking this mask off, so I'll go ahead and get the show rolling. By um, Ben, tell us about this Chrome OS thing. It, um, Chrome OS is dead, it's um, being killed off, it's merged with Android, what's going on here? So the Wall Street Journal kind of dropped a bomb the other day um, about saying that Chrome OS is going to be folded into Android by early 2017, or as early as early 2017. Um, and of course, as soon as that happened, a bunch of the blogs jumped on it right away, some giving the right information and others highly exaggerating it. But the gist of it is Google is not killing Chrome OS, but rather they're kind of going to fold it into the Android operating system and kind of create a new version of Android that's meant for computers and mobile devices. So like Windows is doing with the 950 and the 950 XL? Will it only be a 950, 950 XL? Um, I would say to an extent, yes, but at the same time, no, because it's not like you're going to dock it and then you get this big thing on your computer. I think it's going to be you have it. It's just the same operating system on all of your devices. So I guess sort of like uh, universal apps in a way. Okay. So, uh, Ben, as a fan of Chrome OS, are you happy about this, or are you kind of disappointed that the operating system is going away? I'm very conflicted about it. I, um, in a way, it could be a really good thing because it means that Android is going to be a better place for productivity and that um, the computers that it runs on, that Android runs on, are going to be more useful because the current ones are very not nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> nicely. Yeah, but um, on the other hand, I'm also I also don't want this to happen because I use Chrome OS every single day and I love it to death and I really don't want it to change. So it's 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 conflicting. I don't know exactly what I want to come out of this. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've used Chrome OS multiple times, but it's always been on like really cheap laptops that like my high school has. So mm -hmm. um. You know, it's nice. It functions well. It boots up quickly. It's very light operating system, so it's easy to just browse the web and stuff on there. But if we could kind of get the best of both worlds by merging this somehow with Android, if we can get more of a desktop-like experience, I guess, on a Android computer or Android laptop, but still have all of the like applications and such that Android has, I think that could be a pretty cool merger that Google kind of actually touched on um, at their last stop. Uh, not their last press conference, but the one they had where they debuted um, Lollipop, I believe. So they at least talked about how they were bringing Android apps over to Chrome OS, and I think that was a point mm -hmm. where we started to see them maybe follow this path that would lead them to merge Android and Chrome OS at, in some form, way, shape, or form. So, um, yeah, is there any date as to when they're going to like actually do this, or is it just like very um. fresh and well, this, there's there's nothing really set in stone, but uh, they were saying it could happen as early as 2017, and that they might show off a preview next year. Okay. What? Well, so this speedy. was this was not really an announcement at all. This was a, a, a leak, presumably that the Wall Street Journal picked up on. And yeah. Then of course, uh, folks like The Verge picked it up and, and ran with it, and, and seemed to be covering gleefully the uh, the idea that hey, one of two. One of Google's two operating systems is about to die, um, but we have to consider what the source there was and, and what uh, what they're trying to do. But um, as far as the merger, I'm I'm optimistic about it. Um, um, it I, I think we've got to reserve judgment until we see how they're going to implement it. Um, I'm optimistic just based on the fact that I like. Google's implementations in general. I like Android. I like Chrome OS. Um, if we don't lose the Chrome browser and everything that you can do in the Chrome browser, uh, but add the ability to run native Android apps in Chrome OS, and if we can then do more on phones and tablets uh, to make them a little more productivity friendly, um, I think it could be a, a truly awesome thing. All right. So what? So what do you guys think? Uh, 
you'd like to see if if this did happen, what what would you like to see come out of the merger of Chrome OS and Android? Uh, you know, we've seen you, we've seen Sony with their uh, Z4 tablet, I believe, uh, had some kind of taskbar, and tried to bring in some of those desktop-like features. And then we've seen, you know, it go as far as Jide with with the Remix tablet, and uh, you know, really trying to trying to bring the desktop experience to Android. What do you think Google could bring to that experience? It's tough to say. Um, honestly, the thing I would, I, the thing I still want most of all is the ability to dock my phone and get Chrome OS on my monitor. Mm-hmm. I would rather see them put effort into that. But if they're going to merge Chrome OS into Android, I would want to see... Some form of multitasking, for sure. I would want to see essentially an optimized Android UI for either for tablets with keyboards and for when it's on a laptop. Um, so Honeycomb except better. Yeah, basically the idea of Honeycomb, but not terrible. <laughs> exactly, so Honeycomb but better. Yep. Well, he's, he didn't say better, he said less terrible, so that's a, <laughs> it's slightly different. Um, I think if we can get good keyboard support, good mouse or touchpad support, that would be huge. Um, I was um, one of the early... uh, I I was a Kickstarter supporter, Kickstarter supporter of the Jive Remix, uh, which I did get as soon as they started rolling out. Um, It's a great tablet, but the implementation of Android, um, when it switches over to... You can dock it so to speak, um, turn it into sort of desktop mode, but it's not a desktop. The Chrome browser that you get is not the real Chrome browser. Mm-hmm. Um, keyboard works nicely, um, but um, mouse and touchpad support is is okay. You can scroll, but you can't, uh, for instance, get the kind of context menus that you expect when you, when you right-click on a mouse. Um, it's just not a full desktop implementation. If Google is smart, They'll basically take um, the the innards of Android and put a uh, an interface that becomes more usable when when it when it docks or when it gets uh, when it gets set up on something in a desktop mode, and and then we can have a, a great productivity tool. The, the the Remix, like I said, is a great tablet. It's a wonderful piece of hardware. It's great as a tablet, but. Um, I don't use it. I'll still use my uh, my my Chromebook or my Windows laptop for uh, for sitting down to write because it's simply just uh, more more user friendly. I can be productive more quickly and more easily. But there's no reason that that they shouldn't be able to do an Android implementation that makes it work. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like I was also a backer of the Jide Remix tablet, and I've actually got the Remix mini PC coming here sometime next week, hopefully. And the Remix OS was a really cool take on Android. Um, It obviously had the kind of Windows-esque setup with the kind of Metro UI design through some of their, like, stock applications that were loaded on it, and with the taskbar and the ability to have, like, multiple windows open for Android applications. But there's still just a few wonky things with it. Like you mentioned already, the Chrome browser is just the mobile browser. Um, And there's some weird bugs, too, like Hangouts wouldn't update properly. So um, it was a cool take, and I'd like to see something similar to that, but maybe just with the edges polished out a bit and with everything fine-tuned just to be a more polished experience, I guess. So, yeah, I don't know how much more they can add to it, but if they can maybe, like, make a better Remix OS, I would be perfectly okay with something like that. But, yeah, speaking of um, large Android tablets, we talked about this last week because we had some rumors about it, but today, or not today, but earlier this week, we got official reports um, from Samsung directly about the Samsung Galaxy View Android tablet, which for those of you, if you don't remember, is the massive 18.4-inch tablet um, that Samsung is releasing. Now, as for some of the specs on it, uh, we mentioned a lot of these last week, but I'll just reiterate them since they are official now. We're looking at a 18.4-inch display, um, 1920 by 1080p, which brings you 120 pixels per inch, 
um, which may not seem like a lot when comparing it to, you know, like a 1080p, 10-inch tablet, but when you're talking about something like a TV or something, um, that's actually like a pretty standard resolution for a display that size. As for the uh, specs inside, you're looking at Samsung's own Exynos 7580 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of onboard storage um, with micro SD card slot for expandable memory on there, uh, 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera, no rear-facing camera, thank God, um, and 3G and Category 6 LTE support with, of course, GPS and Bluetooth 4.1. Now, there was a um, leak on the website... Um, Adorama, I believe is the name of it, that it was on a pre-order page for $599. Now, I don't believe this price point was confirmed by Samsung, but if this turns out to be true, um, I can, I personally wouldn't buy one, but I can see that being an okay starting price for this device. I mean, it's hard to compare it to another tablet on the market, or it's really, you can't compare it to a smart TV because we haven't seen a device in this category before. Um, because even with the way Samsung is marketing it, and I'll go ahead and screen share um, the article from the Mobile Cup of Joe site. Um, this is taken from the Adorama pre-order page, but it, this is um, Samsung marketing material, so you can see they're obviously putting this somewhere between a large tablet and a full HDTV. So I think it's an interesting tablet. I mean, I personally, I don't know if this is going to stick with the masses, but if we see at a $600 price tag, I could see people putting the cash down to buy something like this. So what do you guys think? Is it if six hundred if the five ninety nine price tag turns out to be true, um, could you see yourself or someone else putting down six hundred bucks for something like that? I okay. see people buying this over the iPad Pro. Hands down. I can see it being at least to an extent I can see it being like a niche a niche product. And honestly, five ninety nine is not really that bad when you think about it. Um, but I still think the wisest decision they made was no rear facing camera. Yeah, that would have been absolutely ridiculous if they had put that on there. But what about you, Brandon? Uh, what are your thoughts on the Galaxy View? You know, I think it's a neat product. Uh, like I said, uh, like you guys were saying, I, I think it's definitely a niche product. Um, Looks like uh, I've seen a couple carriers already saying that they're going to carry it like Bell, uh, so that could be an interesting way to uh, consume data. Uh, I did like the. I don't know if you guys got a chance, but uh, to to take a look. But uh, I guess there's some kind of special launcher page that has uh, like quick links to Netflix, Hulu, YouTube which I thought was a very smart implementation for this tablet since that's going to be what it's going to be for. Um, I did I did like the stand uh, and how it uh, props the tablet up, um, but then also how you can fold it back over uh, to take a look at it. But uh, I don't know. It's... I think it's for cord cutters, I, I, but, uh, you know, and, and I think they could quite enjoy this, but I don't know. At this price, why not get a television? Yeah, that's honestly true, because you can get something like a Roku Smart TV, which is that I've got downstairs in the living room. You can get a 42-inch um, 1080p TV for like 320 or like 330 or something like that. So, um, I mean, obviously if you want more processing power and you want access to like, the full suite of Android applications, it's a good deal, but you're, you're absolutely right. There, like TV prices have come down dr drastically within the past five years or so. So, I mean, if you've got extra cash to spend and if you want like a 18 inch tablet you can take with you like on a car ride or something if you got LTE support on there I could see that um, being something of use but it still seems like an awkward device and I think we're going to need to get it in reviewers hands and actually understand what kind of device this is and what it's meant to be used for just like when the Galaxy Note was announced like we didn't know what we'd use a device like that for now it's one of the most popular smartphone lines out there so um, not saying it's going to be the next big thing like Samsung maybe thinks it is, but it's it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to see a few sales on it, at least. So, um, any closing... Uh, these segues are terrible. Let's just keep going with the next stories. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, another um, product line that's got quite a bit of hype around it, 
that's um, these are probably some of the last big flagship smartphones we're going to see announced for 2015 are the Motorola Droid Max and Droid Max 2 and the Droid Turbo 2. So Verizon had an event, I don't know what day this week it was, it was some point earlier, um, but they announced two phones. The Max 2 is their kind of mid-range flagship for the year, and the Turbo 2 is their big, beefy, like, everything on the table, um, their top smartphone that Verizon will have in their lineup. They actually went for sale uh, this past Thursday, or yesterday. So the first phone, um, the Droid Max 2, just a quick rundown for some specs on it, and I will go ahead and share an image for you guys so the live viewers can see it. Um, we are looking at a 5.5-inch 1080p HD display, a Snapdragon 615 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, a 21-megapixel main camera, 5-megapixel front camera, and a 3,630 milliamp-hour battery. Um, the second device that Motorola announced at this event uh, is the Droid Turbo 2, um, this is, of course, the big flagship 5.4-inch 2560 by 1440 Quad HD AMOLED display, Snapdragon 810 processor, 3 gigabytes of RAM, a 21-megapixel camera with a 5-megapixel camera on the front uh, with LED flash as well, and a slightly larger 3,760 milliamp-hour battery. Now, a couple cool things that are specific to the Turbo 2 that the Max 2 does not have is that the Turbo 2 will be the first Droid device that you can actually customize on Moto Maker. So you won't have all of these same material options that you did with the Moto X Pure Edition and the previous Moto X devices. There'll be a couple new ones, I believe, and um, I think they're taking wood off of there for the choice selection for back materials. But it's still pretty cool, and you'll still really be able to make the device truly yours on Moto Maker. And additionally, the really big selling point for the device is something called Shatter Shield. So Shatter Shield is this new um, kind of technology Motorola developed for the Droid Turbo 2 that they're saying it makes the phone basically scratch-proof. So the Shatter Shield system is actually comprised of five different layers. Um, underneath the AMOLED display for the phone is actually an aluminum frame. So if the phone is dropped or anything, it's supposed to give it more resistance and more of kind of a guard on the back to keep it from getting messed up at all, basically. Now, on top of the screen are three different layers, and these three different layers are helping to keep dents off the phone. If um, the phone is dropped on its front, there's another layer that actually protects the touchscreen side of the phone, so your input is still there with the device as well, and another one to prevent any scratches and dust like that. So the display is actually a P-OLED display, so it's a plastic display. Both these different layers through the screen, Motorola is guaranteeing this um, for four years after you buy the phone. It's saying that within those four years, it will not shatter whatsoever. And it sounds like they're pretty, uh, um, pretty certain that this technology they developed is really fantastic. And actually, during their live event and live stream for the announcement for the devices, they dropped the phone on a concrete floor, and there were no scratches, um, no shattering on the display whatsoever. So it seems like a really awesome addition to the phone, especially for those of us who are really rough on our devices but don't want a hideous-looking phone like the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active. So I think it looks sweet if you're on Verizon, if you're coming to Verizon. It looks like this is going to be one of your best options out there. Um, I personally was a fan of the original Droid Turbo, and this seems like a really worthy successor to it. So since I just talked for like five minutes straight, uh, what do you guys think about this? I think this is a... You know, a good step up from the original Turbo, and it, um, do you think Shatter Shield is going to really live up to the hype, or is it you know, fancy PR and marketing? Um, here's a question. You said that they guarantee it for four years, so I guess if it breaks within the four years, they replace it? I didn't follow the announcement at all, so... Yeah, all I saw on their website um, for, like, the details for the phone on Motorola page, it said that w within four years, like, we guarantee that it won't shatter at all, so I don't know if, like, if you get a... Um, if, like, a different part of the phone breaks, if they'll replace it, but I'm assuming that, like, if your screen shatters specifically, um, they'll replace your phone for you. But I don't know if it's just a screen shatter and if it's also going to cover, like, other defects with the display as well. I would assume so, but I I'm, didn't... I'm wondering what fine print is on that, because I work in a cell phone repair, and I see phones come in that have been run over, left on top of cars, and all kinds of stuff like that, and, you know, there's really not much to prevent that. So... There, there's got to be some fine print in there somewhere because I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to cover you leaving it on top of your car and driving off. Yeah. So I'd be curious to, uh, once we get more information on that, I'll definitely keep a lookout on that because 
Hmm. I think the way that it works is amazing because it's like it's five layers. But um, I was watching a test that CNET did on it, um, th- where they took it out in New York City and tried. They tried as hard as they could to shatter it, and they couldn't do it. And they had it. They had run over it with a car. They had dropped it from like six, seven feet in the air, face first uh, to the concrete. Uh, they had a horse with a horseshoe on. And all it did was dent the screen. Like, it didn't shatter the screen at all. It just made That's a big awesome. dent in it. So, honestly, I, I think it's really cool. And I I want to test it out, but I think I'm going to have to give this one to one of my editors. Yo, well, as um, Brandon just mentioned in the chat here, too, a, a Motorola engineer actually said that the Shatter Shield technology will be coming to future flagship and future Motorola devices. So hopefully with the Moto X um, we get in 2016, we'll be seeing this technology on there. But Brandon, what do you think about the Turbo 2? I don't know if you're a Verizon customer or not, but if you were in a position to get a new phone on Verizon, would you consider getting this over something like a Nexus XP? I am a uh, Verizon subscriber. Um, I did did take a look at it. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think the Shatter Shield technology is very impressive, and uh, it's definitely worth uh, taking a look at. Um, don't know about the Droid Turbo 2 uh, as far as everything else that it has to, to offer, but uh, the Shatterproof screen is definitely... Uh, you know, a very impressive feature, and uh, I, I think that people should definitely, you know, uh, take notice and uh, check it out for themselves. Yeah, and as for uh, pricing on those two devices, which I think I forgot to mention, the Droid Max 2 will be selling for $384 off contract, and the Turbo 2 will be going for $624, $624 off contract. Um, and when you consider the Shadow Shield technology, the Motomaker functionality in there, and all the rest of the high-end specifications, um, it's not really cheaper than other flagships out there. It's right in the same price range. Um, but for all the durability aspects it brings to the table, that's honestly a pretty sweet deal um, that they're able to keep the price within the same range of other flagships like the S6 and the iPhone and all that. So, since we're on the roll of... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say I'd like to see my friends at, at Square Trade, which I, I covered a couple of weeks ago, who, who subjected um, new iPhones as well as uh, a Samsung phone to a variety of, of abuses. I'd like to see them do some of their dirty work on the uh, the new Motorola screen and see what they can do. They uh, they put the phones through a variety of mechanical abuses, and then as uh, as I guess. To, to get people clicking and, and watching their videos, which which do tend to go viral. They had a, uh, a mixed martial arts guy, Luke Rockhold, um, kicking around a bunch of iPhones, and bending and breaking them. So I, I guess that would be another real test of, uh, of how well the Motorola Glass holds up. But... Um, you know, if it, if it works, then great. And, or if it doesn't work and they honor their four-year warranty, then great as well, I suppose. Now let me raise this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one of the things that um, people aren't liking about the Turbo 2 is on the bottom. Uh, it has oh. that really, really ugly little God. check of a Verizon logo. But um, interestingly, um, Pocket Now just posted something a little while ago. Um, it is ridiculously easy to take that off. It's basically like taking off a screen protector. Hmm. Oh wow, that's really nice to know, actually. Yeah. So that was uh, that's interesting. It just it just reminds me of the days with like the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 on Verizon that had the Verizon logo tramp stamped on the home button. Oh, God, like, that was that was the two. But that was no, that's yeah, that was, yeah, I thought we had moved past that, but. Apparently not. Apparently Verizon still thinks it's okay to place your logo smack dab on, like, the chin of your phone, but... They think they're people Verizon. don't know who they are. Well, yeah, how else would we know you're carrying a Verizon phone? You have to have your logo yeah. on there at least five times. <laughs> well, and they sacrifice the speakers, too, uh, you know, by splitting, splitting those to, to get that emblem right in there, you know? Yeah. It's kind of yeah. unfortunate. I don't know if they did that. I don't know if that was the way the design, phone was going to be designed or, or not, because the Moto X Force, which is 
the international version of the Turbo 2 is the same way. So I feel like they kind of just designed it that way for some reason. I can't imagine it's just because of that logo. Normally Verizon kind of puts that logo somewhere where there's room left over. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't... This is completely unrelated to the Turbo itself, but I just really, really hope that... You know, I'm just, I'm just scared for updates on this phone because we saw Motorola with the Moto E, just like months after it was released, they stopped updating the phone. And that was an unlocked device. Now we're talking about a phone that's going to be on Verizon Wireless, which is notorious for being slow with Android updates. Um, we're already dealing with a company since their Lenovo accusation has been on very shaky grounds and very unsteady grounds with what devices are going to update and how soon they're going to update them. We're going to have to get that on top of Verizon Wireless, so you have to go through carrier testing. Um, I'm just scared about future Android updates on this phone now that I'm thinking about it, which is unfortunate because uh, Motorola with the Moto X second generation was on it with Android updates. So I just hope that the Lenovo deal doesn't hurt this device from getting the timely updates that it hopefully should be getting. Yeah, I mean, if you remember the Moto, the original Moto X, I mean, they beat the Nexus at one point. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, no, uh, updates is going to be interesting. I mean, I think, especially with the carriers, because I don't know if you guys caught it with the 2014 Moto X, um, they're un upgrading the unlocked one to Marshmallow, but the carrier variants are not getting upgraded. Oh, really? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the one I thought was worse than the Moto E. Wow. Well... Um. Hey Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So one thing uh, I'm not sure if you guys had covered yet uh, on the Turbo Two, uh, I was hearing where uh, if you purchase the 64 gigabyte model of the Turbo Two, which it uh, is available in 32 and 64, uh, they're going to allow you to do one redesign through Moto Maker during that time. Okay. Yeah, I do remember yeah, seeing that. I recall that. Yeah. Um, so if you get if you get the 64 gig and um, you get you can do one redesign within the two year period of owning it. That's honestly really cool. Yeah, I know. Like every single well, I've only had the first two Moto Xs. Both the Moto first Moto X, I changed that design like twice. With the Moto Gen Moto X second generation, I changed that design a couple times. So. Um, yeah, that's awesome because that does save you a bit of money and a bit of hassle going through Motorola's like terrible customer service since within the past couple of years is a nightmare to deal with. But understand that's, that's a whole other um, hour-long topic we could get into. <laughs> uh, so going on to a company that uh, has had a very interesting track record since their release. Uh, OnePlus announced the OnePlus X this week, and I'm going to let Ben go ahead and leave this off if he's okay with that, because uh, okay. <laughs> I know that he, I actually saw he was talking about Google Plus, how, um, oh, sh frick, well, yeah, we'll touch on this really quick. Um, so, switching gears, because I'm just apparently out of it tonight, and I don't know how to segue into topics, um... <laughs> Google Plus, this will be a quick uh, news story real quick, but Google announced that for Google Play Music, they will be bringing podcast support over to the service, um, hopefully really soon, within a couple weeks or so, um, because up until this point, you could not get podcasts on the service, so now they'll be competing um, again with Spotify, which is looking like their biggest competitor. They're going to have podcasts on Google Play Music. They'll have access to YouTube Red under the same subscription, so... Um, if you're not subscribed to Google Play Music already and you've been interested in the service with the new additions from YouTube Red and the new additions of podcasts coming to it really soon, um, this could be a really awesome time to at least start a free trial because I used to have the service um, before the podcast and before YouTube Red, and it was a pretty solid offering, but it looks like within the past year or so since I've been on, they've been doing a lot to improve it. So definitely keep your eyes out on it, and we'll put something on the Mobile Club of Joe site when podcasts do go live on Google Play Music. Now, going into the story that Ben's going to lead off, um, I, as I was saying earlier, I saw him mention on Google Plus that he thought this phone actually looked like a pretty good deal. Um, I'm still not so sure how, how I feel about it, but I'll get into more of my personal thoughts on the phone in a second. But Ben, go ahead and lead us off as to what the OnePlus X is. Okay, so the OnePlus X is a new smartphone from OnePlus, and it is a budget offering 
Um, that is, it's about $100 less than the OnePlus 2 at $249, and it's got a 5-inch uh, 1080p AMOLED, uh, Snapdragon 801, 3 gigs of RAM, uh, etc. But uh, really what's impressive to me about this phone is that it's got a really, really premium design, and so it's got a metal frame, glass on the back, and it honestly looks pretty good. Um, and then with, you know, with the the specs are pretty are actually really solid for the price and um, overall it just it looks really nice. I wouldn't say it's the best budget phone out there, but uh, it it's up there uh, in my opinion, and I think it's really not that bad a deal at two forty nine. Yeah, so the phone it definitely looks like a premium design, but my beef with it still is that, and I know I've probably complained about this too often on the show but you still need an invitation to get the phone. Um, for the first month. That's oh, only for the, the first month? month. If, I if, completely if messed I up. Read, if I read their things correctly, which I don't know if I did, considering I also thought it didn't have a front-facing camera for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> From what I read, it, it, it is only for a month. I mean, it is hard. I'm, you know... The front-facing shooter on the OnePlus X leads away with an unmatched quality of 8 megapixel camera. I do see how it's uh, how difficult to. <laughs> uh, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I had just woken up. <laughs> oh well, we'll let it slide this time. But I mean, these Chinese companies with their early <laughs> press releases. Yeah, two fifty is a really solid price for what they're offering. Um, one of my concerns, though, actually, was that the processor they're using in it is the Snapdragon 801 which has been around since 2013, so we're looking at close to over two years now. So are you guys concerned at, to how that processor is going to affect the phone? Because I personally would have preferred to see like an 808 or even the 615 just because it's a newer chipset. Um, I don't know if I'm out of line thinking the 801 is going to perform badly in 2015. It's just like a little bit of concern mm -hmm. I've got looking at the spec sheet for it. I don't, I don't think so at all. Um, I mean, processor-wise, I'd rather have an 801 than I would a 615. 615's um, newer, yes. Uh, more power efficient, yes. Um, but it's, you know, I mean, the 801 is what's in the Note 3, and up until a month that's and a an half 800. ago. Huh? Sorry, that's an 800. Is it an 800? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The 801's in the S5. Uh, no, that's also an 800. The 801 is in the LG G3 and the OnePlus One. I could have swore the 801 was in the S5. Nope. Brandon be the uh, tiebreaker. <laughs> no, it, it, it is the 801. The S5 has the 801 in it. The Moto X second generation also had an 801. Is that's right. That's the other one. That's the other one. See, now we're just going to be looking up specs here. Yes. Yes, we're please, definitely totally looking up specs. Please hold while we look up specs. Um, it is... Oh, no, okay, you're right. It is an 801. Yeah, okay, the Note 3 has the 800, the S5 yeah. has 801. Okay, even with an 800, though, okay, so going back even a little, a little, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, while well, we regain, <laughs> regain composure here. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, even going back... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to wrap up, the 801 is yeah. <laughs> the, the going back to the 800. That's what's in the Note 3, and up until recently, that's what I was using as my daily driver. And honestly, I've not seen a huge speed difference on comparing AOSP to AOSP um, between the Note 3 and and the uh, between the Note 3 and my Nexus 6. I've not seen a huge speed difference. I can do a little bit more at the same time on my Nexus 6, um, but overall, speed-wise, comparing 5.1 to 5.1 on the two devices, um, they're almost identical. So, I, I really see no issue with going with an 801. Yeah, for for a budget phone that the, for the budget phone that this is, I think the 801 was a great choice. Um, if I would have if I would have chosen I would have either I would have either chosen the 801 or the 617, but the 801 is cheaper so. 
kind of makes sense. I honestly wonder if they just had like eight oh one sitting around from the one plus one. If it was that's, like that's that could totally be possible. I mean, like if it performs well, that like, at the end of the day, it just matters if their phone is like fast enough to like open apps like Speedy to get through like the standard apps like Google Plus, Twitter to play some like games. If it runs fine, I'll be perfectly happy with it. And if it does run like a solid budget phone, that's gonna be an awesome price at two fifty. Um, like I said, I, I could just be, like, worrying for no reason. I just didn't know if you guys thought that was an area of concern or not, so... Yeah, no, I think, um, I think it's fine. Uh, I, I have no complaints with an 801 in that. I was honestly kind of happy to see that. Yeah, and, like, it's a 5-inch five five inch smartphone, so it's going to be a lot smaller than what we're used to. But, I mean, it looks like a really nicely designed phone, honestly, the more I look at it. And if the um one month of invites does turn out to be true, um then I will... I have a lot more respect for OnePlus in that case. If it's going to be the same thing like OnePlus 2 where it's going to be invites for like months after the release, I'm going to be in the same mindset. But if it does turn out to be the one month thing, I will I could see myself recommending this to people looking for a phone under $300. Which is something I never thought I would have said about a OnePlus device in 2015. <laughs> Honestly, I would probably recommend the OnePlus 1 before I recommended this just because the really? OnePlus 1 it's a little bit bigger. It's got the it's yeah, I least... personally see that as a little bit better phone, and it's this it's the same price if I if I recall correctly. Um yeah the well the one you don't need an X, or the one plus one is going for uh what is it is doing it, more fact, it's... more fact checking now um two okay, ninety nine for the sixty four but, but you get you get sixty four instead of sixteen yeah you get you get a I think you get a better phone personally but well at least that in that case. Like, if someone wants a smaller phone, then they've got the OnePlus X, but if they want, like, yeah. a 5.5-inch with more memory, you've got the option for 50 bucks more at the OnePlus One. Which, in its own right, is still a fantastic device. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, OnePlus, as a company, has made some stupid decisions, and I don't respect them that much, but the oh, OnePlus cool. One is still a really, really solid device. Like, I had that phone, and I was in love with it. The company is made up of a bunch of idiots, but the OnePlus One is a really nice <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> I think this is going to be a great offering for those looking for a budget handset uh, from Android but want something that's premium. Uh, I think the 801 is going to perform very well. Uh, I have the 801 in my Moto X second generation, and it performed really good up until it got uh, Lollipop. Uh, and I think since this phone is likely to get Marshmallow uh, pretty quickly and we're looking at a pretty stock build of Android, uh, I think this is going to be a pretty uh, attractive offering for a lot of people. Uh, as long as they don't want to get into the mobile payment game. Yeah, because no NFC again, because OnePlus doesn't yeah. want to spend four dollars. I that okay. Now you make me lose respect for this phone even more because I understand that further reasoning with the OnePlus Two, they left NFC out because they said that users of the phone didn't take advantage of the feature. But like you said, NFC is a dirt cheap thing to implement to a phone, um, and even if they added it. it I, if they put NFC in the OnePlus X, I really don't think it would have changed the price whatsoever on this thing. So, um, I will be curious to see though if the OnePlus Two, if this whole one month of invites before the phone goes on for a normal uh, pre-order or normal order, or whatever, um, I wonder if that's going to carry over to the OnePlus Two as well. Because if it does, um, maybe OnePlus can actually get their stuff together and sell phones like a normal mm -hmm. company. Yeah, I mean, kind of going back on the NFC topic, I think the thing that kills me about the fact that they did include it again is they didn't have the excuse of, oh, well, people don't use it. <laughs> um, they don't have the excuse of, oh, people don't use it because people clearly want it after all the backlash they got from the OnePlus 2. And see, Joe, that is how you keep a straight face. That is, um, that's good, uh... Whew. That's good work, Ben. <laughs> Better than so, the so, Patrick, a man who I have um, <laughs> very little uh, patience for, and I have something to look forward to while you go through a whole session of talking here in just a minute. <laughs> um, tell us about the Wacket Smart Wallet and the Zeus, because you ditched out on us last week because you didn't want to talk with us about this Wacket thing. So, base, yeah, I know. So, you use an excuse about IKEA, but whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> go ahead and tell us about these devices because I know little to nothing about them and um, let us know what they are, how they work, and um, how much they cost if people want to get them. Okay, first let me unlock 
walk it, so that way I can actually kind of show a little bit of what it is. Okay, so this is walk it. It's a wallet. Um, it's got a full touch screen on it. It's an e-ink display. Um, I absolutely love it. It will actually go through and reprogram a card with a magnetic strip. So the whole premise to walk it is you take your cards and you swipe them in. Um, think of square. And so you take and you swipe the card into walk it and it, it stores it. You go through and you add all the information for the card, the card verification number, um, you know, expiration date, stuff like that. It pulls most of it from the card itself. Um, but you store it in, in walk it. And then that's what you take when you go shopping. You know, you, you take that. You don't take a huge wallet. It's got a little, on the back, it's got a little leather pouch so you can still bring a couple cards with you, um, which I still have to do because Walk It has yet to introduce chip and pin, um, and I'm actually talking with them, uh, working with them to find out how they're going to, uh, you know, adapt to that since chip and pin is going to become the standard here in the United States soon. Um, but you take it with you, you go somewhere, you do unlock Walk It with a four-digit pin. Um, it's an alphanumeric pin. It can be any combination of four numbers, letters, or characters. And, um, and you can do uppercase or lowercase as well, so it can be very secure. You unlock it, you choose your uh, card that you want to use, and it goes through and it programs the card, and then you just swipe it, just like a normal card. Uh, and you can store as many cards as you want on there. So you go through, you swipe it, and it, it works just like a regular card would. Uh, for cards that have barcodes on them, um, Milo's Rewards and other things, you can actually type in the code, and walk it will generate the code on the screen and since it's an e-ink display it scans very easily. Um, one thing that walk it has over most other you know smart wallet replacement type things is it's completely rechargeable. It goes six to twelve months on a charge and you know it charges up overnight once it does die. So whereas you know with coin and all these other offerings they're one-shot deals you know your coin dies you have to buy another one um, walk it, even though it's more expensive at $180, you buy one and you're good for life. And if they do ever change anything, um, all you have to do is just get a new card. And it's all very modular. Um, so you actually have your, this is the walk it here. You have the leather wallet part and then you have your card. So my initial walk it was actually broken. It had a bad touch screen so they just sent me a new main, uh, main unit in, and everything was good. Um, and then we have Zeus, which I don't have with me, so I'm going to do a quick screen share here. Oh, and let's see. Always unprepared. Yes, I am. So here's Zeus, and what it is, is it is a smart car charger. You know, first we had smartphones, then, you know, smart TVs, smart home appliances, smart wallets, smart car chargers. When we'll get smart people, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, I, I hear they're working on it. Um, but it's a smart car charger. The build quality is absolutely phenomenal. As you can see here, it says designed in Germany. Um, it's got lights in the USB ports, which is really nice. Um, but where it's really awesome is what you see here, smart car finder. Uh, your car charger links up to your phone via Bluetooth, which... You know, it's still mind-blowing the fact that my car charger is connected over Bluetooth to my phone. And it's, it uses GPS, and since it's connected to your car, it obviously knows when your car is running and not because it can see the, uh, the changes in power. So when you shut your car off and you start walking away from it, before it disconnects from Bluetooth, it actually sends the GPS location of your car, or, or of Zeus, to your phone. So, you know, you leave somewhere, you forget where you parked. Um, it's actually, I'm sending Zeus to Disney World this Monday uh, when one of my writers is going. Um, so, you know, he leaves Disney World. All he does is he pulls out his phone, and just like you see here, it pulls out a compass, and it tells you exactly how many feet or, you know, depending on how far away you are, miles you are away from your car, and it directs you right to your car. It tells you when your last parking time was and, and everything. It's really great. And the biggest thing is it will charge at 2.4 uh, amp out on both cur or on both outputs. Um, the one thing that everybody has been, you know, kind of wondering about is what will, you know, support the Nexus 5X fast charging or whatever they're calling it and everything. And um, Zeus went through and did a case study, and they used Nexus 5X with the number one selling 
uh, car charger on Amazon, the number one selling name brand, and Zeus. And Zeus charged it 2.7 amps or something like that, which is more than any of the other car chargers did. Um, so it charges extremely fast, and, and I've noticed that too. Um, so I absolutely love it. But, you know, we're, we're going into a day and age where everything is going to be smart, and we're going to have to do less and less thinking. And I don't know, you know, exactly how I think about that. Um, you know, my car is going to tell me where it's parked as soon as I walk out of it. I only have to carry one one thing with my walk it and I have all of my cards with me. Um, our society went from very simple to very complex, and now we're going back to very simple. Yeah, what definitely. do you guys think? I think that's fantastic. I mean, I saw that it was a smart car charger, um, just like through Google Plus and stuff early in the week, but the car finder actually looks really impressive. Um, how much are these devices going for? Like, are, are they still like... Uh, I saw on the Zeus, at least, it was still on Indiegogo. Um, are these like still in a Kickstarter type of phase, like a backing stage, or can you pre-order them as like normal products? Um, as of right now, they are still, I believe, in the Indiegogo stage. Um, let me go check their Indiegogo real quick. And um, I backed it for thirty dollars to get uh, to get two of them, um, just because nice. you know, obviously we're. We're reviewers here, so we get one, and then we get the uh, the reviewing one. Um, it looks like they still have. About 500 left if you want to back at $30. You get one cool. um, Matt Black Zeus. Um, and then they've got a couple more. If you want two, it's $58. Uh, three, it's $87. Um, and then awesome. it goes up and up. But um, right now, they've been funding for 12 days. They've raised $137,000, uh, which is 1,376% of their goal. So That's I'd say they beat that. I say. You said it's thirty dollars um, for two of them. It or is the the yeah they had a thirty dollar for two. They only had six hundred of those, and that was just for reviewers. Um, okay. But right now it's thirty dollars for one and fifty eight dollars for two. Well, even at thirty dollars for one, I mean, if you're going to compare that to something like that turbo charger, that turbo car charger that Motorola made, that goes for either thirty or thirty five. So basically the same price as that. If you're still getting like quick charge capabilities with that car mm -hmm. finder technology, um, I can definitely see that being a clear was the, winner uh, over. Was the Motorola one a dual USB? Did it have two USB ports? I don't believe so. Yeah, this has two USB ports, and both USB ports actually have a line of LEDs inside of them. Um, so you know, if it's if it's dark out and you need to plug something in, you don't have to flip the lights on. It's just you know, it's already lit up. That's really cool. Oh, uh, what about the Wocket smart wallet? It is, I believe. Let me go to the website to double check. Um, yeah, you can buy them now, and they're one hundred and eighty dollars, one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Uh, let me see when they're shipping. I don't know exactly when they're shipping. I can find out from uh, from Walkit because I will be on a call with them probably in the next week or so to talk about different things like um, the electronic verification um, and a few other things that they've got planned that I've been talking with them on. But um, it's $179. You can find it on walkitwallet.com, W-O-C-K-E-T wallet.com. Um, and it's got all the information there. You can go through and buy it there. Uh, you can take a look at it, see everything it does. Um, honestly, I'm not sure that I would spend the $180 on Walk It yet. I would wait at least until they come out with the way to use chip and pin. Um, I know that I'm, like I said, I'm working with them on it to find out, you know, how they're going to do it. Um, and there's a couple other things that they're working on that, that are going to be really awesome if they can work on them. Um, can't really say them yet. But yeah. I would wait a little bit um, if you're really wanting to buy it. Uh, but, you know, it's $180. So you can get it on walkitwallet.com. And um, it's actually made about 200 miles south of me in, uh, in Melbourne, Florida. So that, that's another cool thing. I'm going to try and get a, uh, get a tour of the factory there. So, What about you, Brandon? What do you think? Or, uh, Brandon or anybody here, what do you think about these devices? I'm I'm curious how how uh, much success you've had had with the walk it. I've I've heard uh, mixed mixed reports on it, and just kind of curious what what your overall uh, experience has been using it. And, you know, has it worked at like the gas station or you know or or you know at Walmart? You know, what what's your experience been like on on this? 
Um, it's worked at you know every gas station I've tried it at. Uh, my primary card that I use is a chip and pin card. So if the place requires it to be chip and pin, then it doesn't work because it's going to require you to insert that that chip. So I've I've tried to use it at a few places and it's kicked the card back, asking me to insert the chip. So I still have to carry around my normal cards with me. Um, but I do carry around far less cards than I did before because my cards that I don't use as often, I can store in there and they're not chip and pin. So I can keep those with me um, and it's it's quite convenient. It's you know also very fun to show off to friends like, hey, look at this. Um, but I've really, the only place that I've had issues with it being accepted is Lowe's and Lowe's is, you know, most normal cards have issues being accepted at Lowe's. <laughs> so, do you think it's actually relevant with with uh, mobile payments be becoming such a big thing? Do you do you think that this is really going going to catch on, or or what's your your thoughts on it? I do only because mobile payments are only coming a thing. Um, the only mobile payment solution right now that I see taking off is Samsung Pay. Because I don't see everybody um, adopting NFC payments. I, I mean, they have to completely retrofit everything to adopt NFC payments. I know at work we don't have an NFC payment reader, but if somebody came in with Samsung Pay or even with Walkit, I've used it at work. Um, works just fine. Very cool. What about the price tag, though? Who, who's really going to spend... Um, $180 to have um, a more convenient way to pay. I don't know. A businessman. Somebody who's constantly walking around. They want more security. You know, if I lose my walk it, and actually they're getting ready to, re to release a phone app um, to, to the pre-release uh, to the pre you know release units um, that will allow you to use two-factor authentication. So you will have the PIN and you will have voice authentication to get into it. So if I lose my walk it, you know, yeah, I lost a $180 wallet, but I didn't lose any information. Nobody can get into it without either my PIN or soon my PIN and a voice in a voice print. Um, whereas, you know, if you lose a normal wallet, everything in that wallet's gone. Uh, one thing that walk it prides themselves on is they say, you know, you could even store your social security number in it. And if you lose walk it, you don't have to worry about it because it's got that dual layer, you know, authentication in it and people can't get into it. And since it's not, you know, I keep going back to coin because that's the only other really big name in the market. To get a card on coin, you have to swipe it through your phone, it gets uploaded to their cloud, downloaded back to your phone, and then synced over Bluetooth to coin. Walkit is 100% self-contained. There is no cloud access at all. So I don't have to worry about any of my cards being stored on the cloud at that point, just like I do with any you know, phone that I'm doing NFC, it's all still local. It's all still just as secure as keeping my cards in my regular wallet. Except if I lose this, I'm out $180, but I'm not out any information. I don't have to call and cancel all my cards, get new cards back or anything like that. I just, you know, I just get another walk it. Well, it seems interesting for sure. Like I said, I'd still prefer mobile payments, but I also see your side of things where that's being more towards like a business type of person as well, but I think you did sell me for sure on a Zeus. I think after the show I'll be ordering one of those because that sounds Good. really, really cool. It's awesome. I think I might as well. Well, it looks like I'll we're all buying Zeus after this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, that's about... We had a couple more things planned, but we're already past the 10 o'clock time, so... Before we close out the show, I will go left to right and just kind of catch up with the hosts and see what we got planned um, for this upcoming week. So, uh, first up, Ben, what's going on with you this weekend and this week here coming up? Well, I am finally finishing my Moto X review uh, this weekend. Um, I've got most of my footage done, so I'm going to be editing that over the next couple of days. I am shooting my Nexus 5X review tomorrow and covering whatever happens in the news next week, which hopefully is not another quiet week. Yeah, really. <laughs> right, so this week was a little bit better than last week, but still. Yeah. What about you, Brandon, our special guest for the night? What do you got going on? Well, not too terribly much. Uh, hoping to uh, 
get some get some vehicles fixed up and and uh, serviced, uh, and hopefully uh, hoping to ride my horse. And that's about it. But you got a horse? Yes, I do. That's awesome. I have never been on one, but I really, really want to. That'd be really cool. Nice. Awesome. Well, um, Fred, are you going to be riding any horses this week, or? Um, I will not be. Um, I'll be well busy doing the usual stuff. Um, as I said, there are a couple of phones here. I'm hoping to do unboxings on this weekend. Um, there will be a review of the ergonomic mouse. Um, sorry, we didn't get to talk about it, but we'll discuss it on a future show, and I uh, will be doing a full review. And it is a really cool device, by the way. Um, and um, let's see, what else can I tell you? I will be absent next Friday. I was asked to do a performance on, on guitar and vocals at a fundraiser for... Um, Actually, it's a fundraiser for a drug treatment center in Queens. Um, it's a kind of a high-end event. People are apparently paying 175 bucks to come. It's a, it's a great cause to support, and um, I'm honored to be playing there. I, I hope the people who are paying that much money are not going to be disappointed to have to hear me play while they're eating their dinner, but um, <laughs> it's a great cause, and uh, I'll be happy to be there. I'll miss you guys, uh, but I'll be back the following week. I'm sorry for the silence, but uh, Patrick is being a terrible <laughs> I am. co-host right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, this might be the last you see of Patrick for a while because he's been trying to undermine the show um, for the past hour and ten minutes we've been on here. Um, but yeah, Patrick, what do you got going on this week aside from getting fired from uh, What's Brewing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um a couple reviews planned. Uh, I've got a couple different things in. You know, I just got an HTC Re as well, playing with that. Um, finishing getting my new desk set up, uh, and you know, trying to maybe get a few articles out on on news if I can try and beat Ben. Um, no. So, oh, it's on. It, it's gonna happen. Uh, but other than that, you know, not really much. I'm I'm trying to schedule a call with Walkit. Um, I've got a call with uh, Sprout Up, which. I know uh, both Ben and I have worked with. I'm not sure if Joe's worked with them yet, um, so I've got a call with them. And uh, other than that, just, you know, the normal college stuff, papers due, midterms to finish, all that fun stuff. Awesome. Well, yeah, I uh, apologize for our podcast listeners and for, honestly, any of our listeners tonight because um, this is an interesting show, and Brandon, I apologize as well because it's... It's usually like this, but in a, a, a lot calmer manner. But um, apparently, Patrick decided tonight would be the uh, the night to screw up everything. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, it was worth it. If only our listeners could see uh, see this chat. If they could see this chat, we'd have to rate this like <laughs> we'd have to flag this or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh! I was supposed to show um. No. Okay, well, Spider Grim is gonna come on here, but no, guess... no, bring her on. We're not gonna end this until. Oh crap! Did the webcam stop working? No, it's working. Stop. Okay, this show is already downhill. Whatever. So thank you guys for watching the show tonight. Um, I understand if we lose some subscribers this week and if we lose some uh, visitors to the website, but be that as it may. Um, this has been What's a Brewing. I'm Joe Martin, and hopefully we see somebody tune in next week. Have a great <laughs>